Hi everyone, welcome back to Med Ed Animation. I'm a medical educator with an interest in animation, and this video will hopefully be a nice intro, high yield video. Um, if you're learning styles like mine, you sort of just are probably like, hey, I looked up animation, I downloaded this free program called Synfig, and now I just wanna like get the basics, just show me how to make a shape and make it move. This thing looks complicated. So this is for you. All right, so uh, in this video, we'll try to just get a basic shape on the board and, uh, and make it move over the timeline. So there are a couple different ways to make shapes among these tools in this top panel here on the left. Um, so there's a circle tool, which is good for, you guessed it, circles, uh, squares, stars, other polygons. Um, there's the spline tool, uh, which is one of my most heavily used, and then the, the draw tool, which lets you draw any sort of freeform shape. So because I actually think it's the most high yield and makes a good example that you can sort of dovetail from there to learn the other things, let's click the spline tool. So again, this is that, that symbol that's supposed to be sort of the pen with the, with the curve attached to it. And so now that you've picked this tool, the spline tool, you can also do it by pressing Alt-B, uh, which on a Mac is option B. Uh, you uh, can bring your mouse over here and you see that there's this other window that kind of lets you pick the parameters of that spline tool. And so, um, so first of all, anytime you make a shape, you can decide, do you want a filled region? Do you want just a line or do you want both? And we can get to these other ones later, a little more complicated, but these are your two big money ones. So let's say I wanted just a shape with no outline. I would just select only the region. Um, this coloring right now means that it's gonna be filled with the color red. And I just click, if I want a diamond, let's say, I just click like this. And you actually have to right click, and then while holding right click, drag to loop spline. Um, and then hit the select tool or click something else and it'll fill, which I know is a little annoying. So, um, yeah, so now I have this, and I, if I use this green origin dot, I can use that to just move the whole thing around. Yay! So we have a shape. Um, and I guess I'll orient you now to some of the other features of when you have a shape, what you can do to it. So again, this green dot lets you move it around. That's its origin. It, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. It also has... Um, you see these brown dots, but actually when I put my mouse, there's actually some yellow dots hidden there as well. So for a moment, I'm going to hide the yellow dots by unselecting this button up here. And now I just have these brown or orange ones. And, and basically these orange ones are just corners. They're just, you can drag and change the shape of any corner, right? So, you know, any of these can move around. Good, so to review, so far the green dot lets you move the whole shape and the orange dots let you like reshape these sharp corners. But what if I wanna make this these edges like more curvy and smooth? Well, then you use the yellow. They're the, um, oh God, the handles. What are they called? The handles of the curve. And see now, look, I can drag these around and they let me make more of like a smooth curve. So it's sort of like the, the more you pull them out, the more force they influence on the um, on the curve. And a lot of other programs have this. If you've seen in my videos on Ink Inkscape, you've probably seen me do something similar. Um, and so then you can modify the curve in a whole bunch of ways. So I'll just like put that back for now. But anyway, that's why, but the point is see, it is sort of annoying because if you have the yellow thing turned on and you wanna just move this point, you'll click it, but oops, you click the curve thing by accident. We'll hit undo and you hide that and then you can grab it. Um, so that's just a little tidbit. The other thing you can do to get around that is even if the yellows are exposed, so you're at risk for hitting these spline things, if you click and drag, it'll automatically grab the point, the whole corner for you, and it won't mess you up. So if you always select your corners by clicking and dragging, you don't have to worry about toggling these on and off. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, the minus here. Okay. So... Uh, okay, so I'm going to delete this. If you want to delete, this is your layers down. These are your layers down here. And so if you want, just hit the red X. If you want to delete it, boom, gone. Okay, we're going to do something similar. But this time, we're going to want to have an outline that's sort of synced up or attached to our fill shape. 
So I have selected both the region it's gonna fill, and I want it to make an outline layer at the same time with the same stroke of the proverbial pen. And by the way, just this is a nuance, but just to make the line thicker to make sure you guys can see it, I'm just gonna make this brush size bigger. Let's, let's make it like 10, just so we know it's big. Okay, now let's do a similar thing. We can make, um, let's make something curvy. Um, so let's make like a semicircle. So I'm gonna click, then maybe here I'm gonna click and drag to make a nice curve. Come down here, click and go across and right, right click over here and go to loop spline. And we hit our select tool or click off of it. Boom, now we have this shape with an outline. And the nice thing about this is look, even if I have just one of these layers selected, let's say I even just have the outline, what do you think is gonna happen if I move this? Is it gonna separate the outline from the shape? No, that's actually a nice feature of the program is while you could detach it if you want to, the default is that the outline will always be linked to the correlating point of its fill of its region or fill shape. So as I move one, so the other moves. So that's really nice. Um, so yeah, and again, so there are so many properties of this you can change now, right? So just like before, I can move these points, I can select this and, sh and move that point around. I can still use this green origin with either one selected, those are linked as well. And that'll move both the outline and the uh, uh, region itself. So everything's nicely synced up. Now, uh, besides the position and the shape of the object, we can also modify other things about how it looks. What else might you want to modify in this kind of thing? Well, the outline, right? Let's. What about the line thickness? So let's say you want to just homogeneously change the whole line thickness of the whole thing. You have all these parameters, like all these um, settings or descriptors of this object. So no matter what object you select, it'll give you different options down here for what things you're allowed to do to that type of layer. So for our outline layer selected, so select, make sure my outline selected here, not the region. Then we go to the bottom left and let's see, um, I want thickness, outline width, right? So that's intuitively width. So let's say I make that 100, that's a very thick line. And if I make that zero, there's no line. So that's how you do that, put it at 10. Um, and uh, there are a bunch of other things down here. Let's say um, you wanted to um, make it sort of like a blurry or feathered edge. You just go to feather here, click it, and raise that number. You can hit the, hit the plus sign and just see what you like. And hit enter, oops, and it makes this like fuzzy, fuzzy kind of thing. So you can decide how feathered or blurry something is that way. Um, I'm gonna click the region for this part, but if you click anywhere in the red here or select the red, the um, the region layer, uh, you can also change the transparency of something. Amount is basically opacity or transparency if you're thinking of PowerPoint or whatever drawing program you're used to. So amount, if I make that 0 0.5, so half strength, look, now it's transparent. Um, you can still move that around and do all the other stuff. That makes sense? So basically for any type of layer you create, there's a series of different numerical ways you can change the properties of it. And that becomes important, right? Because in a normal, when you're making art or a drawing or a figure, a diagram, you modify these same parameters. You've probably done this in PowerPoint or Photoshop or Microsoft Paint or something like that. The only difference with this animation program is eventually we're gonna learn how to tell it to change parameters over time, so it's not static. Um, so let me put this back at one for now. Um, and I suppose, uh, oh, the other thing I can show you is how to change line thickness variably. So I'm gonna select the, line, the outline layer again, and let's say I want it to look almost like a natural pen stroke, and I don't want it to just be the same amount of thickness everywhere. Um, so instead of going to the general parameters for the whole object, I'm going to make another one of these colors visible, and that's the purple. See how it almost looks like a varying thickness line? This purple dot, when I make the purple dots visible, that's the thickness dot. And by the way, you know, so if I float my mouse here now, you see that purple appears, and if I click and drag that, boom. Now I can individually change the line thickness of that one point. 
And if you want that to be more visible, you can just untoggle the orange and yellow. And look, now it's much easier. Whee! Nice and small. And this is really nice once you get to more advanced stuff, like drawing things, like, you know, because then if you want it to look a little more like a natural pen stroke or something, like for a cartoon, you can do this and it gives it a really cool look. You know, like if this was some character's eye or something, you know, you'd, and you have this sort of eyelash that's sort of thin at one end and thick at the other, for example. Um, so yeah, that's that. I'll put this back to normal. I'll hide the purple now. Um, and I'm hitting, by the way, this program, at least for me, does crash a bit. So I'm constantly hitting Control S or going to File, Save um, to constantly save my work um, because this, at least in my experience, will quit spontaneously from time to time. So good luck. Um, okay, so hopefully so far what you're seeing is some stuff that you're like, oh, most of this I could have done in PowerPoint or some, or some other common program I'm more used to. And yeah, this stuff's pretty intuitive. I'm just drawing a simple picture that I could have made when I was seven in like kid pics or, um, wow, kid pics. That's like an old Apple thing. Um, anyway, you get the idea. So it shouldn't be too scary. Um, so just take your time with it. I think the biggest thing is just knowing where these buttons are, just knowing that you pick how you wanna draw here, such as with the spline tool, what type of layers you wanna create, fill, line, or both change some parameters off the bat, and then once it's created, you can pick your layers here and change any of these details about those parameters. So play around with that, make your shape, make a couple shapes with the spline tool, and then, you know, let, let, uh, I'll make a second one with you uh, to review actually, and we can just practice this. So let's say this time I want to use the spline tool again. This time I only wanna make an outline uh, because I'm gonna make a little like snake thing or something. And snakes aren't red, they're green. I'm sure there are plenty of red snakes. Um, red touches yellow, kill a fellow, et cetera. You know the drill. Um, oops, and I actually just picked a fill color, but if I click this arrow, this switches my line color with my fill color. So now I'll be drawing a green line because I'm making a line layer. That was convoluted, did that make sense? You, I could have also just clicked this, but basically this guy is the color of the outline, this guy's the color of the fill. Anyway, green snake, green line, outline layer. Nice and thick, 10 points. And I'm just gonna click and make like a nice serpiginous S here. And when I'm done, I'll just hit the arrow tool or hit uh, uh, Alt A. And look, now I have this serpiginous line. You see now here, as far as layers, this first thing I made has two layers. It had the region and the outline, but this one just has the outline. Great. Now, because I want it to be like a cool serpent, I'm gonna pick, use my line thickness tool and hide the other colors. And let's make it thick here and thick here. You can also select multiple points at a time. Like see, I just clicked and dragged, selected these two. And you can, I can either click and drag or I can use my arrow keys actually, my left and right keys to make these bigger and smaller as well. Let's do that. And I'm gonna give them a skinny tail. And I'll bring this orange thing back so I could change the point, stretch it out. And so I'm just playing around, right? And so it looks like a natural swoosh. So that's the idea. And if I wanna make this more transparent, what would I do? You remember, I would just go to a mount and make it any 0.2 would be really faint or uh, um, 0 0.9 would be almost fully opaque but slightly transparent. You know, so if I put this over this, you can just see that red thing behind it just a little bit. So that's kind of the, that's the idea there. So just keep playing around with, with the shapes with the spline tool and um, and then we'll uh, follow up in another video.